man. You may be seated, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. How you guys doing? Oh, wow. We got one guy over here fired up. All right, there you go. It's good to be alive today. It's a really beautiful day. Yesterday was so humid. Nice to get that rain. <laughs> this morning, come out, you can breathe. It feels nice. You're not like in a, a hot shower. <laughs> My name is Dan Rivera. And uh, for the past month, I've been leading this church here while Jameson's out of town. And it's been awesome. <laughs> it's super fun. Uh, let's uh, go over to uh, 1 John. And we're going to go to 1 John chapter 5. And that's what we're going to read today. We're going to finish off our series on 1 John that we've been doing this month on simple love. Learning how to love God and love each other better. This month has been an immense uh, privilege. Just really fun learning how to lead a church. And uh, from just leading campus ministry to leading a church is a big kind of leap. It's a big difference. Um, and I can and I will write down what I've learned, okay? So look for a, like a published book or something. <laughs> it's going to be great. Like just like two chapters maybe, you know. Um, here's what I did right and here's what I did wrong. <laughs> and so I'm excited to uh, share with you guys as I get time to meditate on it myself. But uh, I do want to say thanks to you guys for letting me lead, <laughs> for being receptive to that. And letting me use my gifts, gifts so much. I mean, I feel like I, I've been using my gifts a lot recently with music and preaching. But I've also, you know, gotten to pass on uh, the reins to some people. Like, Steve's been stepping up a lot awesome. with song leading. And that's been fantastic. And so, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And so, it's just great to... Uh, to get a new role because then you train people up, you know? And so I think uh, I want us to know that we all have gifts to use. Like your gift isn't straightening up chairs before service. That's a great way to serve, but that's not your spiritual gift. Does that make sense? Like, like that's not your, the pinnacle of your existence. Like there's ways for you to serve. And um, this is a we thing. Um, I want us to cross the finish line together. I want us to share victories together. And today, I want us together to take some time and think about the victories we've shared in this past month. So I'm going to do a short lesson, and then we're going to take communion together. But uh, the only difference today with communion is that uh, I would like for us that while we take communion, to pray with somebody sitting next to you. You know, if you're alone in your row, maybe you guys can pray together, but like, this is not going to be like a traditionally silent communion because we're going to be praying out loud with each other, okay? I want us to pray, however, about the victories we've shared this past month. Something you feel like God has really um, blessed your life with this past month. And uh, I wanted to give you guys a heads up for that so that way at the end of service you're not caught off guard. So be thinking about what victories has God given my life this past month? And how can I share that with my brother or sister sitting next, sitting next to me through prayer as you take communion? The title of today's sermon is Victorious Reflections. And it's a short overview of how the month went for you and where we go from here. Um, Jameson is coming back in about a week. And so uh, it's just cool that we get to step into another month together. But where do we go from here considering what we went through last month? Let's read here uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse 1. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. This is how we know that we love the children of God, by loving God and carrying out his commands. In fact, this is love for God, to keep his commands. And his commands are not burdensome, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. So we see this word a lot here, overcoming, um, victorious, uh, conquering. And at the end of 1 John 5, I guess he's thinking, you know, man, 
we have things to do still before we pass on to heaven. But you know what? You can be victorious in your life. And he says the one who overcomes, the one who, who has victory is the one in verse 5, the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Why is this such a big deal, you know? I mean, if you grew up in church, you probably grew up believing that anyways. So maybe it wasn't a huge stretch for you to believe, yeah, Jesus is the Son of God. But it is a big deal, actually. If you, you maybe grew up believing that, but it didn't mean anything for your life, you know? And so when you come to that real faith, this is your personal belief, this is what your life stands on, it changes a lot. Acknowledging Jesus as the Son of God, saying, I believe Jesus is the Son of God, puts him as an ultimate guide for you. It puts him as the guide to living a life of love and faith. We should listen to what he says and do what he does if you say that he's the Son of God. Jesus is, in a way, have you guys ever heard about the Sherpas from Nepal and Mount Everest? Anybody? Yeah, we got a few. The Sherpas, okay? Jesus is like the Sherpas. The Sherpas take people up Mount Everest. Mount Everest is 29,000 feet tall. From base camp, base camp is where you start the hike. From base camp, base camp is at 17,000 feet off from sea level. So from there, from 17,000 process, it takes people about 40 days to do that. I was reading an article by NPR and it said um, a Sherpa working above base camp on Everest is nearly 10 times more likely to die than a commercial fisherman, which is actually the most dangerous non-military job in America, being a commercial fisherman. And they're also more, more than three and a half times as likely to perish than an infantryman during the first four years of the Iraq war. That's just looking back on the statistics. Pretty much one in every 100 Sherpas will die on the job. There's a 1.2% mortality rate for this job to help people reach the summit. And so Sherpas are this Nepalese ethnic group that numbers around 150,000. There's 150,000 of them living today around that number, but they're renowned for their climbing skills and their superior strength and endurance in high altitudes. They're literally paid to prepare the route for the foreigners trying to climb that mountain. And so they're the guides. They actually carry most of the load. You carry like a camera and a water bottle and they're carrying whatever else you need. They secure the climbing routes. Um, they fix lines, they ferry the supplies and they guide your, the clients all the way up and even to other Himalayan peaks. In other words, without the Sherpa, you're not gonna make it up this mountain. Okay, and how ridiculous would it be if this is your first time standing in line with the Sherpa, you guys are about to start your first climb for base camp, and you guys are going up, you know, you get on the trail, the Sherpa's leading the way, and you raise your hand, and you're like, hey, excuse me, that way looks pretty good, I think we should do that one today instead. <laughs> would it feel like, yeah, that, that's a nice, that looks scenic, let's go that way. How ridiculous would it be for you to do that? Why is it so ridiculous? Because you don't know the way. You've never been up this mountain before. And the Sherpa is the one who is paid to set the place for you. Jesus is like the Sherpa. What he says goes. Do what he says and you'll be victorious. He knows the mountain. He made the mountain. He invented it. So when we decide to say Jesus is the Son of God, we're saying, you know the best way to get to God. You are the Son of God. Show me the way. Show me what to do from now on in my life, and I will follow. It's so cool to, uh, to have Jesus as a personal guide because he's not unwilling. He actually invites you alongside of him. He says, come and follow me. My sheep listen to my voice. I also think that maybe if you're struggling with faith in Jesus as the Son of God, it doesn't come from a feeling, but thinking through it. Reasoning through your faith. This is either true or it's not. My ways are either better off without Jesus or they're not. And you have to decide and make that choice. I am totally biased and I think that Jesus' way is better, okay? 
But I didn't arrive that through some feeling. Like, the feeling fades. And that's why we need to focus on what's true or not. Psalm 119, verse 59. It says, I thought about my ways, and I turned my step back to your commands. I thought about my ways, and I turned my way, my steps back to your commands. This past month, Every time I've decided to follow the commands of Christ, it has turned out for the better. There hasn't been a single time where I felt like Jesus just really pulled a fast one on me. It's like, psych, way to love that guy, joke's on you. you know? <laughs> Actually, it turned out better every time. Not, not that it was necessarily easier, but it turned out better. In verse, verse 5, he brings up this idea that we have victory. This is the victory that has conquered the world, our faith. What victories have you experienced this past month in your walk with God? I think for myself, I've turned a new page in my closeness with Him, in my relationship with Him. And as I've been telling John every week, I've been just been soaking up the book of Acts. And I haven't uh, really enjoyed reading Acts like this, and I don't think ever, actually. But it's just been so so fun and fantastic and uh I've, that's been so rich and i've even made new friends like like my friend dio back here again i know you guys met him last week but that's my new friend and we play soccer together and we speak portuguese together he's from angola and so we're god's blessed me with new friends you know and um and so as i do this also god loves me enough to have shown me certain things about myself and so i've been blatantly revealed my pride. I think I hunger for glory and I want to be known and I want the idea that greatness is built on what others think about me. And that was good. I'm really glad that I realized that about myself this past month. But when it hit me, halfway through leading the church, I was like, man, this is tough. I do not like that part of me. Um, but I also think I, God gives me great victories because he's now shown me this stuff. Um, can we get the next slide here? Thanks. So that's our group yesterday. This is the campus ministry, at least half of us. And so last night, yes, that's me and Steve in the back. We were in Philadelphia, Schwenksville, just outside of Philly last night. And we got back at about midnight and a half. So it was just really uh, a wild ride. Uh, about a three hour drive from there to here. So this is the start of our campus ministry conference that's going on right now. So that's where I'm going after church today. I'm going back there to be with all these campus students just at camp, infiltrating camp. It's amazing. And so um, talk about victories. I think this is a huge victory for my life because um, three of those people in that photo are people that God has let me meet and help become Christians. And so I didn't do anything super special, but I like get to look back and I'm like, God really moved. And can I get the next slide? And he also blesses us with something new. So this is actually Rob's nephew. And uh, Theo is moving here as a freshman in the fall. Um, and he's, uh, he's a fired up guy. He's working at camp this summer. But uh, last night was really a night of celebration. And me and Steve just felt sad leaving. We were like, oh man, that we have to go back. Like, do we have to? It's like, we, yeah, I guess we do. I'm preaching and we should lead songs and stuff. But, um, but yeah, we came back, you know. But in that moment, there was just so many victories going around the whole place. Like, you just see people, they're like, you are my victory. You are my joy right now. And I get to step back and think about how God has been so good to me even without me stopping to think about it and realize it. And we have so much goodness to celebrate. There, it reminds me of uh, the scripture in 1 John 2 that we read a while back. But you know, when I'm stuck on my pride and stuff, it's, it's just ripping me away from what, how much God has shown his love to me. And so in 1 John 2, 17, uh, oh sorry, 1 John 2, 16, everything in the world, the lust of the eyes, the, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, they don't come from the Father, but they come from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. As I follow God's commands, He shows me 
more and more how to love him better. And so in order for him to do that, he has had to reveal my pride so I can love him better in that area of my life. And so what part of your life has he revealed recently? And see that as a victory. Like, is there something you did that was not good? What, what, what did you mess up in this past week? God turns that into a victory. If you allow him to lead you forward. And here's the best part about his commands. In verse 3 of chapter 5, he says his commands are not a burden. God's commands are not a burden to us. We walk around burdened as if God is burdening us. God's not the one burdening us. We're burdening ourselves. The world burdens us. God does not burden us. This scripture says his commands are not a burden. Negatory. They are not a burden, okay? They, it is more burdensome to follow anybody else versus Christ. Christ is not burdensome to follow. So if you feel burdened, what is that indicating about your relationship with him recently? Where do we go from here? From now on, I think we focus on sticking close to Christ. We learn about love for each other and for God from Him. And we allow our walk with Him to not be burdensome. Are you willing to let that happen in your relationship with Him? To allow your walk with Christ to not be a burden, but to be something that brings you joy in your life. And let Him enter in those parts of your life that really are burdening you right now. And so I wanted to take some time as we close it out right now to reflect on our victories. We're going to sing a song, and then we're going to uh, pass the communion plates. And uh, during that, I would like for us to pray with somebody next to you. If you have a group of three, it's fine. But uh, let's pray together about our victories while we take communion together. Amen? Awesome. So uh, let's stand on up, and we'll sing another song together.